I, I put together a clamage of a, a number of different things, but I, I guess what I want to say is that uh, I'm a baby boomer, and I'm sure there are millennials in the audience today, uh, and I'm sure our thought patterns are at the opposite end of the spectrum from each other. Okay? That's okay. That's what makes America America. Uh, but business is business, and I thought that the subjects that I wanted to talk about today impact everyone and everyone's business in this room. And th those subjects are government, insurance, and earning capabilities. Okay? I, I think it's the, the benchmark of our, our country. Uh, I think it's the reason that we were established as a country. So I feel this meeting will be beneficial to all of us if I am able to communicate an awareness to everyone in this room that unless we are cognizant of the government's actions on a daily basis and put forth effort in monitoring its actions and efforts, then our capabilities to earn will be greatly diminished, maybe even eliminated altogether. Uh, I entered insurance into this equation as an example of a positive and negative predicated upon defining legislation and administration. Government is another department, facet, or area of your businesses and mine. And that's where you got to look at it. You manage your business, you manage marketing, you manage your personnel. We got to think about, we have to manage business, we have to manage government. If we don't manage government, then what we're doing is we're not managing cost. And if we don't manage cost, Carnegie that owned U.S. Steel never worried about his profit. I read a book about him. It was always his cost. Government's a very, very expensive entity. I'd like to take a look at the other end of the spectrum of insurance, things administered correctly. And I didn't do this by design. I didn't know that Pinnacle was sponsoring this. But about nine, ten years ago, when the whole world crashed, and I was doing every conceivable thing to try to keep my businesses in business. I had 600 employees at that time. I had 12 stores. We have six stores now. We have 350 employees. But we were doing every conceivable thing we could. We brought Pinnacle in. And, and Pinnacle just took our cost and managed them, brought them within the parameters that we could afford, managed any problems that we had relative to one of our employees that was injured, made sure it was fair and equitable for everybody. So at that time, the administrators from Pinnacle, which is a quasi-public-private entity, we're, we're all aware of that, right? Okay, it's, it's, it's public, it's government, but it's private. It's like us in this room. Asked me to speak at a, uh, I believe it was a, a budget uh, committee meeting that had Democrats and Republicans both on it. And this one particular senator, uh, I spoke and I, I told him that we were counting on the money that Pinnacle had saved and distributed every year because we figured we had about three, four employees we could pay with that money. And that's how close we were running our budget. We needed that money. And it was a half a billion dollars that Pinnacle had escrowed, okay? And 50,000 businessmen at that time we were all going to get a piece and we we're going to live another day, okay? We we're going to make it through that depression fog that we went through for about six, eight years. And this particular senator, she wanted to swallow it. She wanted to take it for the state of Colorado to run the state of Colorado. And I, you know, I was really adamant about that not happening. I mean, our, our, our business was on the line, and there were 49,999 other ones that I knew we had the same problem. So she said, well, Mr. Medved, if, if you don't take that money and, we, and you don't give it to us to run the state, how would you run it? Man, did she ask the wrong question. <laughs> Did she asked the wrong question, because I, I testified for about 25 minutes. I told her how we shut the lights off at 9 o'clock, everybody gave their uniforms up, we had furlough days. I, it went on and on and on and on. And, and, you know, we made it. We made it through it. And I told her, we rebitted every vendor, okay, we eliminated vendors, we did all kinds of things. This is a true story. Two days later, I had a state auditor in my dealerships for two years. That's a true story. That's a fact. I, I think what they paid her, I think they found $30,000 out of eight businesses 
in two years. I mean, I'd have just written him a check for 40 and told him, you know, just leave. But that, that's what I'm saying, that we have to be involved. We have to be involved with our government. We have to be involved with the people that want to govern us. And we need to know who they are. And they need to be answerable to us, OK? Because things like that happen. Our Automobile Dealer Association, that I'm very, very proud to be part of and have Tim represent us, took the bulls by the horn in a situation on our state sales tax. I've never seen a more convoluted situation than our, our state sales tax. You, you can't tell what to charge anybody. You know, you'll charge them, the address will be wrong, there's more money due. You go try to call somebody on Tuesday after you sold them something on Saturday, tell them you need another 155 or $255 for taxes, you got a better chance of broad jumping I-70, okay? <laughs> They're not giving you the dough, okay? You alienate them, the manufacturer calls you. And so, it, not only that, it's cumbersome. We, we have situations where you gotta pay all kinds of tax fees to license, to sell in different communities. And with us and the amount of stores we have, it, it was like the auditing teams were in a holding pattern to come in a DIA. One would come in, the other one would land. One would launch, one would land. I said, this is just crazy. It doesn't make any sense. It's taken my staff's time up. So with uh, Tim's direction, we uh, have uh, organized a coalition. We brought in other entities, other business uh, entities, and uh, we're moving towards simplifying the state tax. Again, we're getting involved. We're, we're, we're not letting the bureaucracy run us totally, OK? Um, I want to share an experience that I've had the last week, week and a half. You know, I remember when I was in the Navy, we'd uh, they'd say, okay, uh, the fiscal year is here. Uh, we're going to fly. We're going to burn fuel like crazy. And I, you know, I'm 22 years old. I love flying. That's why I went in. Okay, we're going to burn like crazy. Why is that? Well, the budget's coming up. If we don't burn this money, uh, we won't get it next year. Well, that was my first understanding of government, okay? I remember a year or two later, it was the other way around. Man, we don't have any dough, okay? Uh, <laughs> we're not flying. So uh, that's, that's kind of the way they run their businesses, our business, the business that you and I own with them. We run ours a little differently. I, I want to share this with you, and I'm not going to bring up the department because uh, I'm trying to get something accomplished right now. But you talk about frustrating. I think about the money that's being spent by everybody in this room and I think of the quality of uh, a customer service that I'm receiving, receiving as an individual. I'm sick to my stomach. You, you know, there was a uh, uh, police chief down in uh, Castle Rock, uh, and he, he was a heck of a guy. And uh, he died about three, four years ago. And we call up, and his assistant's a very close friend of mine, and I couldn't believe how they responded and, and, and how they took care of us. And, and I said, Tony, I, I, I can't believe you're a government entity and you do the things you do. He says, John, it's customer service. Now, I want to tell you, you talk about a white deer, that was a white deer, okay? Because that's not what you usually get. Let me tell you what you get, okay? I wanted to get this particular license, okay? It's a personal license. And uh, I filed for it. I feel I met all the parameters. I get a letter that's uh, dated... March 18th, on the outside of the envelope. They open up the letter. My wife shows it to me. She opens the mail every day. I come home at my dinner after work. She says, you, you got to look at this. Uh, the letter was dated February 16th. Now, I look at the envelope. I look at when it came. It was certified. And I had like 72 hours to respond or they were going to come and grab my youngest kid, you know? <laughs> and, and, and I said, what, what? This is crazy. So I got on the phone. And uh, I, I work with some people that are really trying hard, but the bureaucratic mindset, the swamp, whatever you want to call it, is so ingrained and so treacherous, and there is, there's nowhere that intelligence perseveres. There, there, there's nowhere where you do the right and the intelligent thing, okay? And there isn't anybody that works for that entity that's willing to walk outside the yellow line. And you want to know something? It's impossible to get anything done. So I go ahead, I meet the parameters that they want, and they said, okay, now you got to do this. 
And so I met those parameters, and the clock is ticking now. I only got so many hours left. And they said, okay, now you need to do this. So I go through this with them, and this goes on and on. Finally, I'm so frustrated, I, I don't know what to do. So I call the head of the department with the state of Colorado. You're, you're going to love this, okay? 14 and a half minutes I'm on the line. Now I got ADD, guys. 14 and a half minutes is like 12 and a half hours, okay? 14 and a half minutes. Finally, I get a hold of someone, and the poor kid, she's, she's a nice gal, and I said, can I speak with so-and-so? Uh, well, he's, he's not available. Oh, okay. Anybody here own a business? Are you ever available? Huh? Are you ever available? I'm available all the time, okay? And if I'm not, I got a gal that's been with me 22 years, my executive assistant, that's on in a matter of a nanosecond, okay? Sorry, he's not available. I said, oh, okay. Uh, would you like his assistant's voicemail? Well, I said, how about let me talk to the assistant, period. I don't know if she's in. Now, this is like 3 in the afternoon, and, and a short day for me is 7.30 at night, okay? Uh, oh, okay. So uh, I was able to say, you know, does she have an extension? And, oh, oh, yeah, I'll give you the extension because he doesn't have a telephone number. There's no telephone number that you can get a hold of him through. But, but she has an extension. I said, what would the prefix be on that? So I was able to get the number. So I go into the voicemail. I, I, I pleaded. I left it. It's been 48 hours. I haven't heard a thing. Okay? Now, the clock's ticking. I got till the end of the month to get this accomplished. And I'm thinking, do you know how much money I spend in taxes every year? Do you know how much dough these people come and get? And where's my service? Where's my customer service? Where's, where's my return on investment? Where's your return on investment? Very, very frustrating. It's, it's almost like they, I remember they used to talk about the Chinese during the Korean War when they brainwashed people. They would just, it would just be a drop at a time, a drop at a time. Pretty soon your government changed from when I came here 30 years ago to we, what we have today. We don't need more taxes. We need better spending and we need scrutiny of what we're doing. And, and like I told that state senator, I said, you asked the wrong guy, okay? So all of us have an obligation to make sure one thing, and I'm going to close with this, is the opportunity to ring the bell. You know, Debbie and I have been in 70 countries, and there are beautiful places all over the world. Trust me, there are. The reason that people try to get in here all the time and lock themselves in containers and everything else, it's been the only place in the world that you can ring the bell. My mom and dad were born in a, a country called Slovakia today. It was Czechoslovakia, it was Austrian-Hungarian Empire. They had fifth grade educations. It was a dream. We could ring the bell. And we did. I don't know that you can do that now. We got to make sure that our government allows us to ring the bell. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.